families and friends. The Battle Hymn of the Bulldog Nation and the Class of 2018.
family and friends. Please rise for the faculty of the University of Georgia.
families, and friends. The Grand Marshal and the Party of the President of the University of Georgia. Good evening. The University of Georgia welcomes the members of the class of 2018. And we welcome their families and friends to this spring's undergraduate commencement ceremony. 
as the birthplace of public higher education in America, we are proud to celebrate the accomplishments this evening of our outstanding students. Please remain standing for the presentation of the flag of the United States of America and the flag of the state of Georgia to be followed by our national anthem. The colors will be presented by cadets from the University of Georgia Air Force and Army ROTC units. The national anthem will be led this evening by Kiera Alexis Grant, a vocal performance major from Atlanta. Following the national anthem, please continue standing for the invocation to be offered by Lindsay Atkinson, Lead Associate Director of the UGA Wesley Foundation. Let us pray. Gracious God, what a joyous occasion we gather for today at the University of Georgia. We come from various faiths and spiritual traditions to honor the hard work and accomplishments of our graduates. Thank you for the opportunity to pursue higher education and for the chance to be a part of something larger than ourselves. God, we thank you for this university and for the administration faculty and staff that make it possible for students to be more fully equipped for their futures. We pray that you would bless President Moorhead and give him wisdom and vision as he continues to lead this institution to greater heights. Lord, we pray that you would direct the steps of each graduate and make their way firm. We ask that you would call them into vocations that will lead to success and a fruitful life. Make them confident leaders in their communities, in our state, and in our world. Give them peace and assurance as they leave this season and step into the next. We ask that their days at the University of Georgia would be remembered fondly and with great joy. Yet this day would mark for them that the best days are still to come in their lives. As they depart the ceremony, May your spirit give each of them a desire to be lifelong learners, and may they never forget the pride there is in being a Georgia Bulldog. Amen.
Thank you, Kiera, and thank you, Lindsay. Everyone, please be seated. I want tonight to thank the University of Georgia's Hudson Wind Ensemble for this evening's live music, led by conductors Cynthia Johnston Turner with assistant conductors Bradley Esau, Jonathan Poquette, and Matthew Sadowski. We are truly grateful for the Hugh Hudson School of Music and director Dale Monson for providing us with such talented performers. I also want to express my appreciation to the UGA Air Force and Army ROTC cadets for presenting our colors and to members of the Arts Society and the Student Alumni Council for helping with this evening's ceremony and also the ceremonial percussionist of the Redcoat Marching Band. We gather tonight in this setting to formalize the accomplishment of the graduates that you see before you. We recognize their hard work, their commitment to a goal, their dedication to the ideals of the University of Georgia, and importantly, the support of their families and friends. Commencement is a rite of passage long held dear in academia. But commencement at the University of Georgia is truly something special. The symbols and the rituals we incorporate today from the wearing of the red and black to the college and school banners on our stage and the singing of the alma mater, all are sacred traditions to us. They bind us together as alumni more than 310,000 of us all around the world. As a fellow alumnus, it's my honor to stand alongside you as a devoted member of the Bulldog Nation. We are loyal, we are proud, and we make a positive difference in the world around us. This evening is a joyous occasion as we celebrate the class of 2018. But it also is, unfortunately, a bittersweet time as we remember classmates who are not here. Among them are four young women whose lives were taken tragically in a terrible automobile accident two years ago. Kayla Lee. Canedo, Brittany Catherine Feldman, Hallie Grace Scott, and Christina Devon Samaria were sophomores at the time of this accident and would have been here this evening graduating. While they are no longer with us, their amazing legacy and the positive impact that they made on their friends, family, and the rest of the university community live on. Let us pause for a moment of silence in memory of Kayla, Brittany, Hallie, and Christina. Thank you. The family and friends of these amazing students are here with us this evening. They showed then and continue to show today amazing grace and courage. Please join me now in recognizing them. Thank you so much. 
to the class of 2018. You have earned your degrees through your effort and determination. And along the way, you have advanced knowledge with your professors, received assistance from staff members, collaborated with your fellow students, and most importantly, you've given back to those around you. As alumni, I hope you will continue to remember the relationships you formed with your classmates, advisors, professors, and others you met during your time here at UGA. These relationships will become even more profound to you in the future as you look back upon the influence they have had in your life. Remember the deep ties that bind us together. And remember that wherever you go throughout your life, you are now a part of the UGA family. Whatever your field, your education here has prepared you to use your knowledge to improve lives, improve communities, and indeed change the world. That is how you carry on the land-grant tradition of this great university. You should be proud of all that you have accomplished so far, but I expect that you will all go on to do much more. As UGA alumni, you do not rest on your laurels, nor do you forget the purpose of your education. And while the degree you have earned and the opportunities you have experienced here will certainly help you achieve your personal goals, you are now also equipped to become part of something larger than yourself, to make a positive impact on the world. We now expect uncommon things from you because you are a graduate of the University of Georgia. Congratulations. I now want to take a moment to introduce the senior administrators of the university who in their operational areas have contributed to your education. They are seated on the stage and I will introduce them by row. I'll ask them to stand as their names are called and be seated once their row has been introduced. Audience, please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Dr. Pamela Witten, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost. Mr. Ryan Nesbitt, the Vice President for Finance and Administration. Mr. Kelly Kerner, the Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations. Dr. Raul Srivastav, the Vice President for Instruction. Dr. David Lee, the Vice President for Research. Dr. Jennifer Frum, the Vice President for Public Service and Outreach. Mr. Victor Wilson, the Vice President for Student Affairs. Mr. Griff Doyle, the Vice President for Government Relations. Ms. Carrie Hobson-Pate, the Vice President for Marketing and Communications. Dr. Chim Chester, the Vice President for Information Technology. Dr. Russell Mumber, the Vice Provost for Academic Affairs. And Dr. Michelle Cook, the Vice Provost for Diversity and Inclusion and Strategic University Initiatives. Please join me in greeting these senior administrators. In addition to the deans who will be presented in a few moments, let me recognize others on the platform. Again, please hold your applause until the introductions are complete. Several of our deans are not directly involved in this particular ceremony, but we're pleased to have them with us this evening. Lori Ringhan, the Associate Dean of the School of Law. Dr. Suzanne Barbour, the Dean of the Graduate School. Dr. Lisa Nolan, the Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine. And Dr. Shelley Nuss, who is Campus Dean of the Augusta University, University of Georgia Medical Partnership. We're also pleased to have with us Ms. Bonnie Schumann, President of the UGA Alumni Association, who will deliver a welcome in a moment. 
Serving as Grand Marshal for tonight's ceremony is Dr. Scott Pagan, Chair of the University Council Executive Committee and a faculty member in the College of Pharmacy. And it is the tradition for the Sheriff of Clark County to participate in the University of Georgia commencement. And I want to thank Sheriff Ira Edwards for being with us this evening. Please join me in a round of applause for these platform guests. I will now call on Dr. Pamela Witten, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost, to introduce the first honor graduates for this commencement. President Moorhead, it is my privilege to present 37 of the 43 students this year who have maintained a perfect 4.0 cumulative grade point average on all the work attempted at the University of Georgia, as well as college-level transfer work attempted prior to or following enrollment at UGA. We certainly commend these students for their high standards of personal excellence and for their outstanding achievement, and we wish them well as they pursue their varied careers. The first honor graduates are seated on the front row, not a surprise, it's probably where they sat in class as well, and I'll ask all of them to rise as their names are called. If the audience would please hold your applause until all have been introduced. We'll start with Allison Elizabeth Berg, Management Information Systems and International Business. Bruce Taylor Burns Jr., Finance. Savannah Lynn Carroll, Human Development and Family Science. Rebecca Lee Case, Linguistics. Haley Elizabeth Clark, Biochemistry and Molecular Biology and Economics. Rachel Ann Cole, Accounting. John Michael Corson, Psychology and Biology. Shelley Rebecca Idson, Management. Stacy Elaine Evans, Biological Science. Samir Cyrus Farouk, Biology. Robert Payne France, Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Nicole Alexander Goldberg. And friend, Marketing and International Business. Lori Elizabeth Hanna. Environmental Health. Elizabeth Alexander Hardister, International Affairs. Benjamin J. Landis, Finance and Risk Management and Insurance. Marguerite Catherine Lanford, Social Work. Catherine Elizabeth Long, Early Childhood Education. Sibley Francis Lingard, Psychology. Emily Kathleen Maloney, Sociology and Cognitive Science. Riley Ayers McGee, Advertising. Artura Trevon Trevon Nelson Silimon, Psychology. Mackenzie Annette Myrick, Film Studies. Michaela Elaine Price, Biology. Amenya Uday Ravul, Nutritional Sciences. Suki Young Shin, Applied Biotechnology. Adam Joseph Schindler, Accounting. <laughs> Molly Rose Simon, Journalism and Political Science. Hunter Glenn Smith, who is tonight's student speaker, political science. Stephen Nicholas Holmes, finance. <laughs> Jason Patrick Terry, physics and astronomy. Brooke Nicole Tillis, finance. <laughs> Nolan Thomas Tucker, genetics. Savannah Brian Vakili, finance. Abby Alessandra Van Gorder, Political Science and Social Studies Education. Evan Joseph Wallace, Economics and International Business. Jonathan Parker Waring, Computer Science. Sarah Galinis Wellborn, Psychology. Please join me in extending congratulations to these outstanding students. President Moorhead, we're just getting started celebrating students, and if this is any indication of the evening, I think we're going to have a fun night. In the audience tonight, there are also family members, friends, and colleagues who provided support and guidance to these first honor students. Will the guests of the first honor graduates please stand up and let us recognize you as well.
So at this time, we're going to transition and we're going to honor those who are graduating with honors this evening. So the distinctions of summa cum laude is accorded with those students with a 3.9 grade average or better. Those graduating magna cum laude, graduating with a 3.7 to a 3.89. And those graduating cum laude are graduating with a 3.5 to a 3.69. So let's start with the summa cum laude. Would you all please rise for recognition? Please be seated. Now our magna cum laudes, you please stand for recognition. Please be seated. And now let's recognize those graduating cum laude. Please rise for recognition. At this time, I am pleased to call to the podium a member of this graduating class who will speak on behalf of all of his classmates. As you just heard, Hunter Glenn Smith is a first honor graduate who is graduating this evening from the School of Public and International Affairs. A native of Jessup, Georgia, Hunter has been actively involved in numerous areas of campus life during his time at the University of Georgia. He among those is Hunter's involvement as a resident assistant with University Housing. Hunter has been an integral part of the Litscombe Hall community for the last three years. He also serves as an RA co-advisor for the Mel and Litscombe Halls, a role that allows him to directly help first-year students navigate the university. Hunter also was a member of the Honors Program and served in the University Judiciary and the Arts Society. He was named a Crane Leadership Scholar and is graduating tonight as a First Honor graduate. He spent part of his studies in Washington, D.C. with the Honors in Washington program, and during that time he completed two congressional internships, experiences that he says helped him grow personally and professionally. Between his commitment for the University of Georgia and his desire to serve the world, Hunter embodies an amazing drive and passion for achievement and excellence that I believe characterize this entire graduating class. Please welcome an outstanding member of your class, Hunter Smith. Thank you, President Moorhead. Class of 2018, it is a pleasure and honor to speak to you on this momentous occasion. In many ways, my life story began with the University of Georgia. 23 years ago, my parents came here as first-generation college students. My mother first felt me kick in the Tate Student Center. My parents would go on dates to the creamery. And after I was born, I would even attend some of my mother's chemistry classes when she could not find a sitter. No wonder I hate chemistry, right? <laughs> my parents would bring us to Athens every summer and show us the campus. And I remember on one special occasion, I got so excited, I accidentally ran through the arch. Like any good UGA student, my parents explained the consequences to me, and I cried for three days because I thought I would never graduate. Joke's on you, Mom. <laughs> then, in 2007, tragedy struck, and my father passed away at age 32 due to a brainstem hemorrhagic stroke. My mother made every sacrifice imaginable to give my siblings and I a better life and ensure we had every opportunity of our peers, if not more. I decided to live for the legacy of my father and bring honor to his name by seeking a life dedicated to serving others. This led me from Wayne County, population 30,000, to the University of Georgia. 
While the individual elements of my story are unique, the story itself is not. We are a community of stories. We all come from different backgrounds and origins across the state, nation, and world. We each faced and continue to face different adversities and new challenges, and we each took unique pathways in our time here at the University of Georgia. But the unifying factor tying us all together is the University of Georgia. We all cling to wisdom, justice, and moderation while sharing an affinity for red and black attire and spending fall days in between the hedges. As graduates, we must now write our own stories based on the lessons that we learned here. We must strive to live for a purpose-driven life by growing through adversity, seeking our passions, and building a legacy that will outlive us all after we are gone. No matter what the past, Today, we all stand on the precipice of, future, of the future. On May 4th, 2018, we may have entered the stadium as students, but we will leave as alumni embarking on the rest of our lives. Here at UGA, our ideals and values are physically represented in one of the most enduring symbols of the university, the pillars of the arch, representing wisdom, justice, and moderation. We all have our own personal arch of values that we craft from our experiences and personal growth. If we model our arch like that one on Broad, then we will succeed in creating transformative and solid values that will shape and guide our lives for years to come. Iron is strong because it is forged in fire, just as our own values are most strengthened by adversity. As we sit in this stadium tonight, the home of so many victories this past fall, I cannot help, yeah. I cannot help but think that tonight we are celebrating our own victory. The great sportscaster Louis Grizzard once said, the game of life is a lot like football. You have to tackle your problems, block your fears, and score your points when you get the opportunity. And I think the 2017 football season can teach us a lot about life. After the victory of the Rose Bowl, the team didn't stop and celebrate. They went directly from the stadium to the airport and were back in Athens early Tuesday morning preparing for the national championship. Coach Smart said, I don't know one person that ever talked about Justin Gatlin being ahead of Usain Bolt at the 50 meter mark. Nobody cares. They only care about where you finish, and they only care about what you do next. That's our objective, to do what's next. Class of 2018, this is only the 50 meter mark of your lives. What comes next for you? Sometimes you'll win, and sometimes you'll be challenged and will fall, but it is in these tough times that we grow the most. May every season of your life be a building year. May you never stop growing. And may you never expect to play in your version of the national championship, but find yourself there anyway. Discovering your passions is one of the most important elements of a successful life. If you're not doing what you love, then you're not truly living. I hope you all will passionately pursue your career, interests, and dreams, but I also challenge you to have a passion for life in general as well a passion for serving others and leaving the world better than you found it. Passion is about working towards something even though you know you may be unsuccessful or have little impact. I recognize the absurdity of my dreams of running for political office, but I still dream anyway. Discover your passion in life and pursue it relentlessly. My father's death and my mother's actions have taught me the importance of leaving a legacy of a purpose-driven life. I have taken the words of the poem, A Splendid Torch, by George Bernard Shaw, as my own life's motto and mission. Shaw wrote, I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I have got a hold of for the moment. 
we each now have hold of our own torch and the opportunity to write the story of our lives. While I do not know what my story holds, I do know my theme, my why. My purpose is to consistently improve myself, the lives of others, and the world around me. Purpose is drawn from our personal growth and must be joined with passion for true success in life. Class of 2018, take hold of your torch and light the path you take today for others to follow tomorrow. The lessons we learned in our classrooms helped us to pass the test, earn the degree, and hopefully get the job. But it is the lessons taught outside of the classrooms that most help us learn to live, grow, and lead. I am truly grateful to my friends that keep me humble and continue to challenge me, my professors, mentors, and advisors who once saw potential in me and decided I was worth developing, my siblings who I hope I have helped guide and serve as a role model to, the memory and legacy of my father whom I hope I have made proud, and my mother without whom I would be nothing and without whose sacrifice I could not have been here today. Class of 2018, while our stories may have all had different beginnings and will have different endings hence, they will forever be entwined in this place and with each other, in this home, the University of Georgia. Grow from adversity, find your passions, and build the legacy of your life as you write your own future. Go dogs and congratulations to the class of 2018. And may the fourth be with you. Thank you, Hunter, for those remarks and for representing your class with such distinction. Tonight, all of you become alumni of the University of Georgia, the birthplace of public higher education in America, and we are pleased to have with us the 75th president of the UGA Alumni Association, Bonnie Schumann, who will welcome you to the alumni family. Bonnie graduated in 1980 with a bachelor's degree from the university. Soon after graduation, she co-founded Barcode Systems, which introduced the barcode to retailers such as the Home Depot, Coca-Cola, and Saks Fifth Avenue. She later sold the barcode portion of the company and renamed it Stratix Corporation with a concentration on software development and total sales solutions. At the time of her retirement as CEO in 2011, Stratix had more than 160 employees and over 150 million in revenue. After her retirement, Bonnie established the David R. Knowlton Endowed Lecture Series here at UGA in memory of Stratix's co-founder. The annual lecture series promotes the intellectual exchange of ideas among business leaders and young scholars. Today, Bonnie lives in St. Simons Island with her husband, also a UGA graduate, and volunteers with her church, community foundation, and sorority Zeta Tau Alpha. Bonnie joined the UGA Alumni Association Board of Directors in 2006 and she has been a constant supporter of this university. I'm pleased she's continuing that journey now as president of the UGA Alumni Association. Please join me in welcoming Bonnie Schumann. Thank you, President Moorhead. It is a great honor to be here with you, with the class of 2018, and with our distinguished speakers, Charles Kelly and Dave Haywood. I would like to point out that Dave was recognized by the Alumni Association's 40 Under 40 program a couple of years ago, an honor that each and every one of you has the opportunity to achieve before long. I know that probably doesn't seem, that probably seems like a long way away. 
On behalf of the University of Georgia Alumni Association, congratulations upon reaching this important milestone. Welcome to the UGA alumni family. It is a great day to be a Georgia Bulldog. Today, you join hundreds of thousands of UGA graduates who share your love for this place. UGA will always be a part of who you are, and the UGA Alumni Association encourages you to always maintain a connection to it and your fellow graduates. All graduates are automatically members of the UGA Alumni Association. At the Alumni Association, we ask you to make three commitments. Connect, hire, and give. Let's start with connect. I know that many of you have spent some time on social media today. How many of you, though, have followed the UGA Alumni Association on Instagram? Now's your chance. So after tonight's ceremony, make sure you log on and, and follow us, and be sure to use the hashtag alwaysadog. When you post things tonight and then later on, we want to see the great things that you're doing as you go forth and solve the grand challenges of our world. As you progress in your careers or start your own businesses, always keep UGA students in mind for internships and full-time positions. And last, remember to give back to the areas of campus that have made a difference to you so that future Bulldogs can have these opportunities and more. The class of 2018 has already made a difference through the Senior Signature Class Gift Program with 2,342 students raising $125,000 for scholarships. This is more than any class since the program started in 1991. So I say give yourself a great round of applause. <laughs> to welcome you as alumni, each of you have been, has been given a coin that bears the University of Georgia arch in your class year. Carry this coin with you as you embark on your careers. Keep it as a bit of good luck a memento of your hard work, and a reminder that all things are possible. Congratulations again, and welcome to the alumni family. Thank you, Bonnie, for your wonderful service to the university. The support and assistance of alumni are absolutely essential to the continued quest for excellence at the University of Georgia, and I hope you will heed Bonnie's advice to stay connected with your university through the Alumni Association. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce our commencement keynote speakers. Augusta, Georgia natives Charles Kelly and Dave Haywood both graduated from the University of Georgia in 2004 with degrees in finance and management information systems, respectively. They are part of the multi-platinum trio Lady Antebellum with Hilary Scott, a Nashville-based singer-songwriter. To date, Lady Antebellum has sold more than 18 million units, had nine number one hits, won the Academy of Country Music and Country Music Association Vocal Group of the Year trophies three years in a row, in addition to winning seven Grammys, Billboard Music Awards, People Choice Awards, and Teen Choice Awards. The band's seventh album, Heartbreak, was released in June of 2017 and was nominated for a Grammy for Best Country Album. The first single from the number one selling album, You Look Good, garnered Lady A another Grammy nomination. Lady Antebellum has participated in numerous fundraisers, charity concerts, and other philanthropic events. In 2015, the group received the CRB Artist Humanitarian Award, which recognizes musicians for their charitable efforts. In addition to his work with Lady A, 
Charles earned an additional Grammy nomination in 2016 for Best Country Duo or Group Performance for the title track off his debut solo album, The Driver, which featured additional vocals from Dirks Bentley and Eric Pasley. He also penned number one songs, some with Dave, for other country artists, including Luke Bryan, Hunter Hayes, and Darius Rucker. Likewise, the multi-instrumentalist and producer Dave has written hit songs for other country artists, including Luke Bryan's first top 40 hit on the Billboard Top 100, Do I, and Miranda Lampert's Love Song. He also produced the debut EP of Post Monroe, a country band Rolling Stone deemed one of the new country artists you need to know. It is my pleasure to welcome two extraordinary graduates of UGA, Charles Kelly and Dave Haywood. Wow, that was, uh, you got the bio that I sent, President, thank you. I figured I'd let him read it, but um, man, thank you guys so much for having us out. Charles will be up here in just a minute. We wanted to share a few minutes and a few words to you guys, and uh, thank you so much to the President. Uh, thank you so much to all the, the faculty and staff. This is really just a neat honor for us. We're used to being in front of people, but not public speaking, so please don't judge us on that tonight. We um, uh, came down from Nashville today. We've had a great day hanging out kind of over by Tate and just reminiscing, you know, Charles and I graduated in 04, like President Moore had said, and man, we sat right over there by the band for every home game from 2000 to 2004, so yeah. Huge dog fans. We, uh, we get score updates in our monitors when we're on stage at night. That's a true story. But, um, I'm sure you guys are probably wondering what in the world a few country singers are doing up on this stage. And I have to assure you, we're wondering the very same thing. <laughs> we, uh, our journey's a little different, and, and hopefully there's a little bit of intrigue with that. But for Charles and I, you know, a little bit of our backstory um, led us to a really interesting place. But we grew up in Augusta, Georgia, down the road. Um, all right. That was my family. They follow me everywhere I go. Um, but um, anyways, we grew up in Augusta and graduated from Lakeside High School and really only applied to, yes, really only applied to, to one college. So did you only apply to one? Yeah, so we didn't have a backup plan. So I'm, I'm happy we got in because by today's standards, we would not have gotten in. But um, man, we loved it here in Athens. Charles and I were, have been great friends since we were probably 12 years old. Um, I always knew that he was such an amazing singer. Um, and it was at Georgia where we really started writing music together. Um, we lived down the street uh, a couple blocks off Cloverhurst Avenue in a place we called the Treehouse, which has probably fallen down by now. But um, we, uh, it was our senior year at Georgia in 2004. Um, and Charles and I didn't play much music while we were here. Um, I was an MIS major, Charles in finance, and I know, computer programming people, I hear you. Um, but man, we loved it so much here. We didn't play a lot of music while we were here, but our senior year, we were at a party at our house, and, and I was playing some stuff on the guitar, just kind of making up some chord progressions, and um, Charles walked over. We hung out a bunch, obviously, here at, in Athens, and came over and said, man, what are you picking on? And I said, I don't know, I just kind of make stuff up. And he said, well, play that again. And he started making up some melodies, some lyrics, and, and that was the uh, very first song that we wrote together was in 04 here in Athens. Um, so kind of a special start to us in our writing career um, as a band, and, and we just fell in love with being creative and writing music. Um, that song we wrote was really awful, by the way, and I hope no, nobody ever hears it. But yeah, the name was, uh, it was called Carpe Diem is on Vacation. <laughs> and that one's gone in the special file folder that will never get heard. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> it went something like this. Carpe Diem's on vacation. 
And it's something, some other junk. <laughs> Charles Kelly, everybody. Um, but we graduated from Georgia, and you know our story was kind of different. We didn't know what we wanted to do, so we graduated, and I went off to Buckhead and worked doing internal auditing at an accounting firm, which is a little different than where I am today. Yes, accountants, that's right. My cousin is here graduating as an accountant, so he, uh, if uh, you're hiring out there, keep an ear out for him. Um, but we went off to work, and I worked in Atlanta. Charles was up in Winston-Salem doing finance. And we just loved writing music together, so we would travel a lot for our jobs, and we would meet up on the weekends and write music. And about after a year or two of working out in the real world, we loved the people we worked with, but just felt like something was missing for us. And at that time, Charles's brother, Josh Kelly, called us and said, man, you guys kind of have a unique um, talent with writing songs. What if you came to Nashville, lived in our house, and, and tried to write music? And so that's what we did. We took a risk and moved to Nashville. I loaded up my blazer with my guitar and some polo shirts and <laughs> headed straight to Nashville. And me and Charles spent every day um, writing songs. And you know, I think that's what we want to encourage you guys with a few points, and we'll, we'll be brief, because I know you guys want to go downtown after this. But... <laughs> See, I, I, we're used to cheering. I like the che cheering is good. We're used to that. Okay. Makes me feel at home. You can yell whenever you want. That's fine. Um, thank you. It's great. But um, so we were up in Nashville writing music, and we met Hillary Scott within a year and started writing as a writing trio, like President Moorhead said, hoping to pitch songs to other artists. Um, and that was our goal. We, we wrote probably a dozen songs together, decided we should go out and play a show, and said, man, this is too much fun. We should start a band, and uh, came up with a crazy name. I helped create our MySpace page. <laughs> so we're dating ourselves. I understand that. but. Man, we had a blast doing it, and we are still to this day so honored and humbled to be able to play music and do what we love to do. It's really a special, special honor. But you know, that risk, I think the, the few things I'd leave you with, and Charles will be here in just a second, but you know, there was a bit of a risk for us to, to go to Nashville, but at the same time, we felt like with a degree in our hand, it wasn't really that big of a risk at all. It was a calculated risk. And I think that's what I'd love to encourage you guys with tonight. Now you have a degree. And now you can take a big risk because you have an amazing diploma and degree from tonight. And be open, be open to things you haven't even dreamed of yet. For Charles and I, we didn't graduate from Georgia and say, we're going to Nashville, we want to be country singers. We got out there and worked hard in the real world and kept our minds open and followed our passion and ended up landing in Nashville uh, in a country band. So for all you guys that don't have a clear vision of where you want to go, be open because Life and the good Lord can really surprise you. So welcome my buddy, Charles Kelly. Uh, why do I gotta follow that? You did so good, you were funny, you got laughs. Is anybody, can I use this, this chalice? Is this, is this open? Whew, um, it's water. So, um, I'm not going to lie, when I first found out that we were going to do this, I, I got a little nervous. I started writing down some stuff. And my, my wife, she's really intelligent. She's definitely the smart one in our marriage. And so I had my first little draft. I said, baby, I'm about to lay it on you. Listen to this. <laughs> we kind of go. We start talking about this, talking about Lady Annabelle. And I, and I said, now this is where I'm going to really bring it in, bring it home. I was going to talk to you all about the Venn diagram. You remember the Venn diagram <laughs> with the circles? And then they intersect, you know, and you got in one circle, hope, you got your dreams. Next circle, you got what you're good at. Next circle, you got responsibility. And when those things mesh, beautiful harmony. She laughed, so <laughs> she literally laughed. And so I deleted it. And she said, is that what you want to hear if you're sitting in here? And I said, no. But I also, it's, it's going to be, I'm 36 years old. It's going to be hard for me to relate to you guys perfectly. But I do remember being there, and I remember being scared, you know what, because I didn't have a clear vision. Um, but you know what? I don't know. 
I knew I had this, this great degree and I would figure it out. But I guess I wanted to just talk about something you might be interested uh, in, Instagram. It's such a, an interesting thing to me and you know, we're all on Instagram. And I think the one thing that I just want to encourage everybody, just stop comparing yourself to other people on Instagram. We know what everybody's doing. Like, you know you're sitting in there and you did a hundred pictures in front of the mirror doing the perfect little duck flip face. And then we see it and we're like, gosh, she's so beautiful. I wish I had the hair. I wish I had this. I mean, we all are going through the same thing, the same insecurities. We go through it all the time. If I see another band or an artist doing something that looks really cool and we're not doing that, I get jealous. And I think jealousy in this comparison is the thief of happiness. So just try to not compare yourself to other people because it will really, yeah, it'll distract you for some happiness. You know, the next thing too, um, I'm not trying to sound preachy, but money has never ever been for me the thing that's brought me happiness. I thought it was going to be the thing. I was sitting in your shoes going, oh man, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to have a jet ski and a, I'm going to go on, I don't know, whatever else millionaires do. And I thought it was going to make me so happy. And it's funny. I mean, the, the thing that has brought me the most happiness is, is chasing my dream. And I really do think I could have found happiness in, in so many different avenues. I really did. As, as funny as it sounds, I loved studying finance and being in then those accounting classes. And I really did. I enjoyed it. It was something that I think I could have found great purpose in. But I also had this artistic side that I knew was kind of in the shadows. And so kind of to go back to what Dave said, you know, there's so many options for you guys. And don't think you only have one clear path and one clear direction. You know, I hate when people say, don't have a plan B, you know, because it'll distract you from a plan A. It's like, that's BS, man. I, I totally had a plan B. It took all the risk away from me. I felt like I could go in there with such just free abandonment and take this risk while you're young because trust me, I'm married now, I've got a two-year-old, and when you have those responsibilities, I guarantee you I would not have taken a risk like I did with Dave and moved to, uh, to Nashville. But again, University of Georgia prepared me, prepared me to work my butt off. I had such great work ethic. I wasn't as smart as you guys, but maybe like a couple of the rows back. <laughs> but I developed a lot of work ethic. You guys, I'm not, I mean, a 4-0, not, there wasn't one professor that just didn't like you and wanted to give you a B. Not one. Blown away. Blown away. All right. That's crap. You don't want to hear that. Oh, yeah, this is kind of clever. I don't like it when people say plan A, plan B. How about we call it two plan A's? Perfect. All right. Um, but I guess... Go jump off a deep end a little bit while you're young. I know a lot of you probably know exactly what you're going to do. you got some jobs set up. But if you don't, don't be afraid to jump off the, the deep end. You know, it, gets, it definitely gets a little higher, that diving board. That was something cool I thought of right now. <laughs> Trust me, the older you get, the higher and higher that diving board's, board's going to seem. You tell I'm getting nervous. <laughs> little chalice time. <laughs> They're like helping me through it. They know I'm struggling. Another thing too, man, go see the world. I grew up in Augusta, Georgia, and I'm not going to lie, man, I was so basic. I, I literally, I really was. I'm not saying there's anything wrong about being basic, but I had the same friends. We all dressed alike. We all thought alike. And I'm telling you, the minute I moved to Nashville, and I, I'm not seeing Nashville, seeing the world, but I, it opened my eyes to, okay, there's this artistic side. Maybe now I can wear some tight jeans. And I did. Maybe I can get a tattoo. So I got this tattoo on my arm, and it's uh, my favorite band of all time is the Beatles. And one of my favorite songs is uh, Blackbird. And there's this line, all your life, you're only waiting for this moment to arise. And I got it in 09 because I said, I don't care if I make another dime in this world. I said, when I wake up in the morning, this makes me happy. 
And I loved it so much. And I want to be reminded of that because sometimes I don't care even if you have your dream job, you're going to have moments that you're just bored and it feels like work. Trust me, I hate flying. I hate being on a bus all the time. I hate missing my family. But to have those few moments of pure passion and purpose, I think, is what life's all about. So I hope all of you can find that. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to, as you travel, if you do get the chance to travel, I mean, there's so many amazing different ethnicities, sexual orientations, races, backgrounds, and it brings so much light and color into your world. I mean, when you go, you know, when you go over to Italy and you're looking up and you're seeing, what was that joke, the 16th chapel, 16th chapel. Um, when you're going, though, over to these places and you're seeing this, it makes your life almost feel like it makes, makes you not sweat the small stuff in a weird way. When I saw that, I said, man, we've been on this, this earth a long, 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 long time. And when I get worried that something's not working out in my life, I think about like, hey, man, this is a long, long journey. And people have been here forever and we're all going to survive. It's all going to be OK. I know you all have so many fears and there's so much in the world right now, so much uncertainty. But um, I don't know. I think it's going to be OK. That was horrible. Oh, this is going to be good. I want to leave you with this. Be nicer to your parents, please. My, I was so selfish. I was so selfish. High school and college, I thought I knew everything. You don't. You don't, you don't. And they, they helped you so much, and they sacrificed so much. I was thinking the other day uh, with my two-year-old, he, he pooped in the tub. <laughs> and without hesitation, I just went, bam, bam, bam. It was like the Matrix. I just, no hesitation. And I was like, I bet my mom's done that. I was like, so your parents, whoever raised you, they've been putting up with your crap their whole life. So the least you can do, give them a big old hug after this and thank them. This is such a huge night and accomplishment not just for you but for them and with that i'm going to end it and guys good luck uh, i wish you all well i hope you can find your dream job but just be happy find purpose and be nice to mom and dad oh, yeah. you're way better than mine dave sorry we are going to end you on this we felt like we had to sing for our supper it, it, <laughs> You take that. You can burn that. <laughs> All right. You ready, Dave? Sing along if you know it. Georgia. Georgia. The whole Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia. I see you, girl. Oh, my, my. I said, Georgia. Oh, Georgia. There's a song, a song. Comes as sweet and clear as those moanings through the pines. Yeah. Well, the arms they reach out to me. I'll sing it if you know it. Come on. Other eyes smile tenderly. He's up on the sky now. Still in peaceful dreams, I see the road that it leads back to you. Ooh, Georgia. Oh, Georgia. But an old sweet 
song It'll keep that Georgia on your mind Wherever you go, it'll keep it on your mind Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia Standing ovation. Thank you, Charles, and thank you, Dave. We appreciate your presence here tonight. You've really honored us. And now the University of Georgia's talented Hudson Wind Ensemble, who provided the prelude and processional this evening, will offer a musical interlude composed by Stephen Bryant. Please enjoy the special performance.
Thank you to the Hudson Wind Ensemble and conductor Cynthia Johnston Turner for that wonderful performance. And now it's time to confer degrees on the class of 2018. I will ask Provost Whitten to come forward to introduce the deans who will recommend their graduates. As we begin this part of the ceremony, let me take a moment to make a special presentation. Samuel Thomas Stoltz is being awarded a degree posthumously this evening, and we join his family and friends in mourning his untimely death earlier this year. In cases where deceased students have made substantial progress toward fulfilling the requirements for graduation, the faculty may recommend that degrees be awarded posthumously. I have accepted such a recommendation for Sam Stoltz, who was a senior at the time of his death and had made significant progress toward his degree in economics. I will now confer his degree. Afterward, I ask you to join me in a moment of silence. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer posthumously the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration on Samuel Thomas Stoltz. Please join me in a moment of silence in memory of Sam. Thank you. The Stoltz family is here with us this evening. Please join me in recognizing them. Thank you. I will now ask Provost Whitten to come forward to introduce the deans who will recommend the graduates. Thank you, President Moorhead, and it is now officially showtime. This is the part of the evening where you are going to officially become graduates of the University of Georgia. And the way that this part will work is that I will introduce the deans of each college, and it'll be in the order that the colleges were initiated at the University of Georgia. And as uh, the dean uh, gets up and speaks, then we'll invite you to stand. And you are welcome to go ahead and show your enthusiasm for graduation at that time. That means hooting and hollering is allowed officially. So we're going to start with the fabulous Franklin College of Arts and Sciences, which was founded in 1801. It's the university's oldest college, and Granddaddy Dean Alan Dorsey will present candidates for degrees from the Franklin College, the Uhachin School of Music, and the Lamar Dodd School of Art. Thank you, Provost Whitten. The arts and sciences are the foundation of higher education. Named for Benjamin Franklin when classes began in 1801, the Franklin College of Arts and Sciences instills in its students an adventurous spirit of inquiry, a love of learning, the ideals of community and global citizenship, and the values of hard work and service to others that are the hallmarks of its namesake. Its faculty are among the best in the nation. Its graduates may take special pride in the quality of their preparation for lives of fulfillment in a world that needs their services. The faculty and I are confident that the Franklin College has provided these graduates with skills, knowledge, and sensibilities that will empower them to make meaningful contributions to society. President Moorhead, with pride and delight, the faculty of the Franklin College and I present the candidates for degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Will these candidates please rise?
by the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, for which, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. You may be seated. Next up is the awesome College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, which was founded in 1859. Dean Sam Pardue will present the candidates for degrees. The agricultural and environmental sciences comprise a dynamic field of vital importance to Georgia's future. Our college is dedicated to the continued success and sustainability of Georgia agriculture, to protect the environment and to assure a safe, abundant, and affordable supply of food. Our students are prepared to compete in a complex and demanding job market to recognize the global importance of agricultural and environmental sciences today and to contribute to Georgia's economic prosperity and quality of life. President Moorhead, I have the honor on behalf of the faculty of the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences to present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Sciences, and Bachelor of Science in Applied Biotechnology. Will these candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Sciences, and Bachelor of Science in Applied Biotechnology, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. You may be seated. The Persevering College of Pharmacy was founded in 1903. Dan Sven Oyen, will you present these candidates, please? Thank you, Provost Witten. The College of Pharmacy prepares the students to fight diseases and improve the health of the citizens of Georgia, the nation, and the world. The knowledge and skills that our graduates of the Bachelor of Science and Pharmaceutical Sciences acquire equip them to develop, improve, and produce highly effective and safe medications, medical devices, and vaccines. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy, I take great pleasure in presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. The fantastic Daniel B. Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources was founded in 1906. 
Dean Dale Green, please present your candidates. Thank you, Provost Whitten. Forests cover more than two thirds of Georgia and provide society with clean air and water, landscapes where we all love to recreate, diverse wildlife and fish habitats, and the foundation of a sustainable and globally competitive forest products industry that adds $35 billion annually to our state's economy. The graduates of the Daniel B. Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources possess the knowledge and skills to sustainably manage our forests, wildlife, fisheries, soil, and water, as well as the people and companies that rely upon them for the benefit of citizens in Georgia, our country, and around the globe. President Moorhead, on behalf of my faculty colleagues, I'm delighted to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. The Exceptional College of Education was founded in 1908. The University of Georgia's newest dean, Dean Denise Spangler, who is in her fourth day on the job as dean, will present these candidates. The College of Education is the largest nationally ranked college of education in the country, with more than 230 faculty offering more than 50 degree programs. Our degree programs include both teacher education from elementary to middle to secondary education, and also such diverse majors as adult education, school psychology, counseling, exercise science, instructional technology, and speech pathology, to name a few. The graduates of the College of Education will be engaged in activities vital to the well-being of an informed citizenry. President Moorhead, the faculty and I proudly present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education. Candidates, please rise. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. The C. Herman and Mary Virginia Terry Blue Chip College Business was founded in 1912. Dean Ben Ayers, will you please present candidates for degrees from the Terry College of Business and the J. M. Tull School of Accounting? Today's graduates from Terry embody the best qualities of 21st century leaders. They possess the management skills, the analytical techniques and the ethical standards to be successful in the global economy. Many have demonstrated enthusiasm for volunteer work, helping dozens of organizations and thousands of Georgians through service learning activities. The young men and women who graduate from Terry today are prepared to be leaders of their organizations and leaders in their communities. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the Terry College of Business, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor's of Business Administration 
and Bachelors of Arts. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Business Administration and Bachelor of Arts, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Well, Mr. President, I guess once they graduate, they can call you Jerry, can't they? <laughs> okay, let's fast forward to 1915 when the gregarious Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication was opened. <laughs> Dean Charles Davis, will you please present these candidates? Thank you, Provost Whitten. The Henry W. Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication is both a tradition and a trust. Founded by the legendary Stedman Sanford and named for the New South's chief publicist and journalist, the college prepares democracy's next generation to protect our freedoms through responsible and effective representation of ideas, institutions, and individuals. Our graduates understand both the power of the media to influence social change and the obligation to exercise that power responsibly. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the Grady College, it gives me great pleasure to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Next up is the Fearless College of Family and Consumer Sciences, which was founded in 1933. Dean Linda Kirk Fox, you're up. Thank you, Provost Winton. The College of Family and Consumer Sciences prepares its students to work professionally with individuals and families to gain an optimum quality of life. The knowledge and skills that they acquire equip them to serve and to preserve our most important social institutions, families, communities, by the application of science and their expertise. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Family and Consumer Sciences, I take great pride in presenting to you the Fax 100 Centennial candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science of Family and Consumer Sciences. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Family and Consumer Sciences, 
for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Dean Anna Chayette will present the next group of candidates from the Set Successful School of Social Work, which opened its doors in 1964. Thank you, Provost Witten. The School of Social Work generates knowledge and prepares students to promote the well-being of individuals, families, and communities, to establish and lead nonprofit organizations, and to create, administer, and evaluate social policy. Grounded in principles of empowerment, self-determination, and diversity, the profession's unifying element is a sustained commitment to social and economic justice. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Social Work, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Social Work. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Social Work for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. In 1969, the Excellent College of Environment and Design was founded. Dean Dan Nanichek, will you please present these candidates? Thank you, Provost, Mor <laughs> Provost Witten. Uh, th there is no longer any doubt that healthy, natural, and developed environments are critical to quality human existence. The graduates of the College of Environment and Design have the highest challenge in the history of their profession. Through their efforts in design, planning, management, and conservation, they have the ability to substantially enrich our stewardship of the environment and, in turn, the sustainability of our lives. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Environment and Design, it is my honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Now we're gonna to move to those colleges that open their doors in your lifetime. So we're gonna start with the prestigious School of Public and International Affairs, which was established in 2001. Dean Matthew Auer, will you please present these candidates? Thank you, Provost Witten. Leadership, responsible citizenship, and service to others are hallmarks of a thriving democratic institution. Graduates of the School of Public and International Affairs are prepared for leadership, good citizenship, and public service in Georgia, the nation, and the world. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Public and International Affairs, it is my honor to present you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in International Affairs and in Political Science. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Arts for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, 
privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. In 2005, the Pivotal College of Public Health was founded. Dean Phil Williams, will you please do the honors? Thank you. The College of Public Health carries out its mission through interdisciplinary efforts that address the physical, mental, and environmental health concerns of populations at risk for disease and injury. The college educates health professionals who are committed to protecting human health through teaching, research, and public service. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Public Health, I am pleased to present candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Health Promotion and Bachelor of Science in Environmental Health. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Environmental Health and Bachelor of Science in Health Promotion, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Just two colleges to go. The effective Eugene P. Odom School of Ecology was founded in 2007. Dean John Gittleman, will you please present your candidates? Thank you, Provost Witten. Look at the world around us. Everyone, every day is impacted by ecology in some way. Climate change, clean and available water, species extinction, disease emergence and spread, these are all tough and pressing issues, ones that we must solve in dynamic and sustainable ways. Our mission in the Odom School of Ecology is to understand the why of this change so that we can better adapt to and manage it. The first and only standalone school of ecology in the country, we offer one of the nation's top research programs in the ecological sciences and adhere to Dr. Odom's principles of a holistic, interdisciplinary teaching and research to prepare graduates for leadership in fields that are crucial for ensuring a future in which natural systems and the humans they include coexist on a more sustainable planet. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the Odom School of Ecology, I'm pleased to present candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science and the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Ecology. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and of Bachelor of Science for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Our final college, the esteemed College of Engineering, was founded in 2012. Dean Don Leo, will you please get this final group of graduates in the end zone for us? <laughs> Thank you, Provost Whitten. Engineering is a science and art of integrating discoveries from multiple fields to create technological solutions that continuously improve the quality of life. The University of Georgia has been granting engineering degrees since its first civil engineering graduates in 1868. Today, the College of Engineering is the academic home of 15 engineering degree programs, and we pride ourselves in educating students to be leaders in the engineering profession by creating opportunities for learning, discovery, and innovation that take advantage of our place in a comprehensive land-grant university. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Engineering, it is my honor to present candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biochemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biological Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, 
Bachelor of Science in Computer Systems Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biochemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biological Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Systems Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2018. To our graduates, you represent tonight tangible and inspiring evidence of the wisdom and foresight of Abraham Baldwin and those patriots who drafted the charter of the University of Georgia and thus began in 1785 the great American tradition of publicly sponsored higher education. You leave here tonight as the next generation of leaders of this state and nation. Whatever your future holds for you, your time here preparing for life and citizenship gives special meaning to Mr. Baldwin's memorable words in the university's charter when he referred to the young people of this state as the rising hope of our land. You are indeed the rising hope of this land, and it is with that belief that we gather here this evening to recognize and celebrate your achievements because you are now graduates of the University of Georgia. Congratulations. Before we conclude, I want to recognize two very important groups of individuals who have contributed significantly to your education at the University of Georgia. We are fortunate to have a faculty of exceptional quality and ability. As teachers, advisors, mentors, and friends, they have been instrumental in helping you reach this point, and I know you're grateful. A number of our faculty are here this evening, and I would like to ask them to stand. I think they're already standing and ask our graduates and audience members to show your appreciation to our faculty. And continuing a university tradition, I now want us to recognize the real heroes of this celebration, the family members and friends gathered here who made this occasion possible for each graduate. Will the families and friends of the graduates please rise and let the graduates show them your gratitude. We will now conclude this ceremony with the singing of the alma mater followed by the recessional and a spectacular fireworks send-off. 
The fire marshal has asked us to announce that the west end zone sections are fireworks safety zones and are closed to the public. During the fireworks presentation, please keep out of the safety zones until the all clear is given from security. And for the sake of our football field, I would ask that the graduates please exit at the same place you entered the field and avoid walking on the grass. The alma mater will be led by Emily Danielle Carey, a vocal performance major from Blue Ridge, Georgia. The words of the alma mater are printed on the last inside page of your program, and we will sing verses one, three, and four. Please rise for the alma mater.